¿Cómo está usted? Mi nombre es Jim Simbala. Hoy es August, the 4 de agosto. Agosto. And I'm happy to be reading to you from 1 Samuel um, as we go through slowly. We're in chapter 17. Why don't you do me a favor? And by the way, somebody watching these devotionals sent in a very generous gift. And if God should so move upon your heart, help us so we can help others. There's a thousand things going on uh, here as we're trying to minister to people in shelters, that population. You talk about a mission field? Check out the shelters and now hotels that are SRO in New York City with people who have been shipped here from border states and they're from Venezuela, Honduras, Mexico, and they are don't speak English. They're vulnerable. They need God's love. They need to be told about Jesus. Well, oh, I know what one of you is thinking. They shouldn't even be there. Look, be that as it may, they're here. They're human. Christ died for them. And you're not more important than they are. And neither am I. So let's settle that. Don't you think some people are now more political than Christian? I think so. You don't hear the like the love of Jesus, friend of sinners, meek and lowly at heart. There's not a whole lot of that going around. But we can change that. So listen to this. David has slain Goliath. They're dead. The Philistines were strewn along the Shaharim road to Gath and Ekron. And when the Phil Israelites returned from chasing the Philistines, they plundered their camp. Not only was Goliath defeated, now the Israelites captured uh, the material things, the loot, the bounty. David took, not a pretty picture, David took the Philistines' head, yuck, and brought it to Jerusalem. He put the Philistines' weapons in his own tent. As Saul watched David going out to meet the Philistines, he said to Abner, commander of the army, Abner, whose son is that young man? Here's where Samuel and the chronology of it, the commentators say it's not written in exact chronology. When did Saul really meet David or didn't he recognize him? Be that as it may, I'm reading according to the text. As surely as you live, your majesty, I don't know. The king said, find out whose son that this young man is. As soon as David returned from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with David still holding the Philistine's head. I mean, like, what, did he walk around with that? Like, dude, what are you carrying? Oh, it's Goliath's head. Yeah. Those are rough days. Whose son are you, young man? Saul asked him. David said, I am the son of your servant, Jesse of Bethlehem. So that's what happened back then. All scriptures inspired by God. So let's, let's look at that, unpack it. What's the lesson there for us? This unknown shepherd boy goes in the name of the Lord and by God's power he dismantles the champion of the Philistines. Goliath is dead. Muerte. So now Saul is saying, hey, he says to Abner, the head of the army, yo, who is that? I don't know, Abner says. He was an unknown. Bring him to me. Find out who he is. So here he comes. Most people carry attaché case. He carries Goliath's head. <laughs> it's just the way it was back then. By the way, isn't it interesting that Goliath's weaponry were kept in David's tent? I wonder why God put that in the Bible. Maybe because every day that David woke up, he could see those weapons and he realized, with God with me, I took that guy down with some stones, one stone, and a sling. Oh, yes, God. 
I can face anything today. Just like David said, I killed a lion and a bear. I'm not afraid of this giant. The same God who gave me victory before and prepped me for the big battle, he'll give me that victory. And now those, those weapons, the spear and the sword, were reminders. you have any reminders in your memory bank of when God saw you through? You know, times when he gave you victory, answered prayer. Satan's going to try to bring up to you your faults, your failures, your stumbles. And then he'll bring you into condemnation. And you'll be just, oh man, did I mess up. And God is saying, no, I don't want you to think of that. I want you to remember the days of victory, the days I gave you the giant's head, the day you won, not because of you, because of me. We need godly reminders, don't we? Come on, don't let the enemy be in, have you in condemnation. You can't undo anything you've done, but the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Don't you have some trophies? Oh, yes, trophies. Remember those. Don't let the enemy rob that. He'll want to remind us of our failures and make us forget the victories. Come on, get up. And now, you know, King Saul is like, who is that? You know, who is that? I just saw what he did. Bring him to me. I want him on my side. You know, a verse comes to me. And always remember this, you that we want to serve the Lord, be used by the Lord. And we're wondering, what position do I have? What title do I have? Promotion comes from the Lord. But here's a great verse. A man or woman's gift makes room for themselves. Listen, Proverbs. A man's gift makes room for him or her. When God gives you a gift, nobody can hold you down. That gift will make room for you. They were like, yo, David, we, know, we want to know everything about you. Like, what's your favorite color? What do you have for breakfast? Why? Because he did something through the gift of faith and, and, and audacity that he had from God. You read church history. The great leaders of church history rose to the top, not by political means and lobbying and all of that junk. No, they were used by God in their preaching gift. They were used by God in some spiritual endowment that they got. And then everyone knew it. God is with that guy. That woman can pray. So we don't have to worry about, oh, I want a title and they're not recognizing me. Listen, God will get you where he wants you. Just let his spirit flow through you and know that the gifts that he gives you will make room for you in the place that he wants to put you. Amen. Let's rely on God, not on ourselves. See you tomorrow. Thank you.